Hello, and welcome to TensorFlow and Keras at Google I.O. I'm Mani Vardarajan, and I'm the Director of Engineering for Google's ML Framework APIs. In this session, we're going to take a quick look at some of the many improvements and additions coming your way this year in TensorFlow and the high-level modeling library Keras. Here's what we'll cover today. First, we'll show you how Keras CV and Keras NLP give you access to pre-trained, state-of-the-art models in just a few lines of code so you can innovate and explore freely. Then we'll talk about dTensor. Using dTensor, you can easily scale up your models and train them efficiently by combining different parallelism techniques. We'll also share JAX to TF, an exciting new feature that allows the high-performance JAX framework to leverage the incredibly powerful and diverse TensorFlow ecosystem. And finally, we'll look ahead to a preview of our new Quantization API which will enable you to make your models more cost and resource efficient without compromising on accuracy. Now, why are each of these so important? Well, let's take a look at the landscape. The world of machine learning is changing faster than ever. Over the last few years, we've seen models go from hundreds of millions to hundreds of billions of parameters. And as models have gotten bigger, training and deploying them has gotten more complex and more expensive. Models are also deployed in more places. Ideas that once started in research are now used in production on billions of mobile devices and beyond. And TensorFlow is where so much of it happens. We are the largest ML development community in the world. We take immense pride in this. We also want to continually make our ecosystem better for everyone. Let's get right into it, starting with Keras CV and Keras NLP. Keras CV and Keras NLP are powerful modularized libraries that give you direct access to the state of the art in computer vision and natural language processing. Whether you want to classify images, auto generate text from prompts like BARD, or anything in between, Keras CV and Keras NLP have got what it takes. And it's as simple as it gets. Keras CV and Keras NLP provide the cutting edge backbone with just a few lines of code. And since it's part of Keras, it's fully integrated with the TensorFlow ecosystem and backed by quality documentation so you can focus on what matters most, innovating. Here's a quick look at some code. In less than five lines, you can bring the state of the art to life. We have a lot more examples like this. If you want to dive in deeper, check out our full talk on Keras CV and Keras NLP linked in the description below. Now let's take a look at dTensor and how we're enabling you to create ML models at unparalleled scale. We're all seeing it. Models are getting huge. As models get bigger, training and serving them gets even more complex. That's where dTensor comes in. Today, we're sharing a simple toolkit to build models at a scale like never before. And it's designed to meet the needs for all in our community. dTensor is built to be flexible, efficient, and device agnostic. Let's zoom in to see how it all works. Traditionally, ML developers have scaled up their models through data parallelism, which looks like splitting up your data and feeding it to horizontally scaled model instances. Now, standard data parallelism does successfully scale up training, but with a big caveat. It all has to fit within a single device. As models get bigger, this is no longer a guarantee you need to be able to scale your models across devices. As you can see here, dTensor allows you to safely shard across multiple devices. But it doesn't just end there. dTensor also enables model parallelism, which looks like sharding the model itself across multiple devices and feeding in full copies of your data to each shard. But here's what makes dTensor really special. With dTensor, you can parallelize your data and your model all in one place. The principles behind sharding your model for use with data replicas or sharding your data for use with model replicas all still work exactly the same way and come together seamlessly under one roof through the power of dTensor. All you have to do is take any model as you've already written it and add just a few lines above to set up an appropriate config and initialize the dTensor context. That's it. If you attempted traditional data parallelism for the model in this example, it would have erred outright the model weights are just too big for a single device. But with dTensor, this isn't a problem. You don't have to worry about rewriting your model or writing different code for different parallelism strategies. 
Whether you're using one device or 100, Dtensor has got you covered. And it's only getting better. Performance today is already on par with state-of-the-art industry benchmarks, and we already have improvements in the works to surpass those baselines. We also want to give you a quick preview of what lies ahead. Dtensor will be fully integrated with key interfaces like TF Distribute and Keras as a whole, with one entry point regardless of device and a number of quality of life features. If you want to learn more, visit tensorflow.org or check out the integration guides on keras.io. Another area we'll be covering today is what we're doing about supporting our research community better, especially with the emergence of JAX. Many of the ML advancements that are now household names had their beginnings in research. This includes the latest models in the news, like BARD and ChatGPT. These architectures came from Google's own published research. JAX has emerged as a trusted tool for much of the research behind these models, but productionizing research is hard. And so we've been putting a lot of thought into how we can bring the production power of TensorFlow's ecosystem to JAX. To that end, we're very excited to introduce JAX to TF, which provides a clear pathway from JAX to the TensorFlow ecosystem. JAX to TF is a simple, lightweight API, and there's a lot you can do with it. For one, you can take JAX to TF to take a JAX model and deploy it either on a server using TF serving or on device using TF Lite. You can also use JAX to TF for fine tuning by taking a pre trained JAX model into TensorFlow and continue training it from there. You can even fuse models together by taking a JAX model, merging it with additional layers and other components, and then train them as one model in TensorFlow. This is a very powerful capability. So let's see how it works. At a high level, to bring a JAX model into TensorFlow, you could do something like the following. First, you would define a model in JAX. Second, you would create a basic wrapper class which uses JAX to TF.convert to express JAX methods as TensorFlow functions. And that's pretty much it. You can save it into a TensorFlow saved model and directly serve, fine tune, fuse, and more, just like we've talked about. It's incredibly easy to do, and your models will still converge quickly and accurately. Using JAX to TF is a powerful way to combine JAX and TensorFlow to accelerate research to production. We look forward to seeing how the community uses it. And with that, let's close with a sneak peek into our efforts to help you make your models more efficient and easier to deploy across a wide variety of devices. So how are we doing this? With the TensorFlow Quantization API, which will be available later this year. Quantization is a set of techniques that allow you to reduce model size, making your models run faster and consume fewer resources. This means reducing how much memory and compute you require to run the models. This can reduce things like mobile battery consumption or server latency and infrastructure costs. Earlier versions of quantization toolkits, including those in TensorFlow, were limited but the TensorFlow Quantization API expands far beyond anything that's come before it. First, it's more flexible. While our previous version was limited to mobile and required using TF Lite, this API enables quantization everywhere, including server, mobile, embedded, etc. Second, it's easier. It works right out of the box with simple configurations requiring no changes to model code whatsoever. Third, it's also more efficient, giving you the power to quantize per layer, per op, or even per tensor to build in a way that works best for you. Let's see it in action. In just a few simple lines, we can prepare the model for quantization and train or save it within a quantization context. Because our new quantized model is naturally compatible with the rest of the TensorFlow ecosystem, we can now harvest the fruit of quantization. And that fruit is sweet indeed. We ran a bunch of tests using the MobileNet v2 model on the Pixel 7 and saw nearly 17 times gain in serving throughput versus the non-quantized CPU baseline. But here's the best part. All that benefit comes without any noticeable negative impact on accuracy. And that's just the beginning. The TF quantization API isn't public just yet, but will be available soon and we'll continue to evolve it to provide even more benefits. And that's a wrap. 
Today, we've shown you just a few of the key things we've been working on, and there's a lot more to come. We can't wait to see what you will build, and we're always inspired by our community's enduring enthusiasm and continued partnership. Thanks for stopping by.